This is just a quick impromptu uh, video. I've got to do something completely different on the lathe, so uh, bear with me. You're responsible for your safety. Uh, don't do as I do, do as I say. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but basically, yeah, this is something that's got to be done and it's got to be done today. And I'm going to get on with it. I've got a recliner. This is the chair in question. And I love that recliner. Uh, it's needed replacing for about 20 years. It's had some modifications over the years. I've replaced uh, the back cushion and the arm cushions with uh, leather cushions. It's had some ink stains over the years, but it's so comfy. It was my grandfather's and uh, grandfather, sorry, granddad, as I used to call him. It's just a comfy chair, and if I nod off in it, it doesn't ruin my back for the next day. If I can uh, push the arm, kick the legs up, but, and it lays down. But one little pin, pin somewhere I've got the pin I will find the pin but I've got to replace this pin because it sheared it was like a, a captive rivet bent over at one side this side which is the original uh, kind of a peened bolt on oh I think this one's on its way yeah there you can see uh, oh I've just noticed the rip deal with that this here that's what tore on the uh, on the other side I replaced it temporarily with a split pin drilled through and the split pin's gone twice now so that's not going to fix. I'm going to manufacture another fixing for it, another bolt. Right, so first things first, get rid of this. Hopefully I can get it centred again, I think I can. Uh, oh, one thing I can show you, Clutter Corner is now uh, also Clutter Corner but we've got my grinding station there and going to be room on the wall for uh, for abrasives although currently abrasives are in this little wheel cabinet um rest of sharpening things big uh, dip tub at the back here for quenching while sharpening i've got this little which is the best camera no let's uh there we go focus you this little rusty bit of my old steel bar stock and we're going to have to make that like a longer version of the original bolt which I also haven't found yet. You put it in a safe place and this is generally what's considered a safe place but other things have been placed in that same safe place and I now can't find it. Oh come on. Ah! Haha! Thought I'd lost it. Thought I'd lost it for a second so here we go. Now the problem we've got one end of this is bigger than the bar stock, so we need to upset that. Nasty bar stock, we don't like you, you you're all rusty. See, he's terribly upset now. So, uh, can't really show you the upsetting, because I need to do it at the vice, and I haven't got a camera over there. But I've upset that metal so much, I upset both ends. As such, I've switched to the RP2000 chuck, with the step jaw actually so you've got this position and this position and internally you've got your four points of contact all right for pen blanks not ideal for this after all a wood lathe but we're going to be going ever so delicate i've slipped the end that i've upset and i'm happy with right back clear of the jaws and i've got this other end that's upset a little uh just protruding out enough and what I want to do is bring that back down to the the diameter of the rest of the bar stock so that I can grip it better in the jaws so lathe on lowest speed highest torque so on mine on the Coronet Herald that's 95 on belt position one I have protected the lathe bed and given myself a bit of a, a collection area here with a, a sheet and all I'm going to do is I'm going to support my arm on the top of the headstock come in with my file this way around because this is my rotation of travel and I want the material passing across the file this way and I'm just going to take very light cuts 
important is staying level in this plane not too much up pressure no back pressure stay away from your jaws i do have a safety edge on this side so i'm not going to grind the face of my jaws away although i don't even want to kiss them and i'm just making small passes a little bit of upwards pressure i'm going to slowly get this ground back into position now the reason i'm doing it like this is you'll get a better view if i take you to the other camera handle i'm going to go on top now and again one straight range of motion plane of motion should i say safety edge towards the jaws from the top here i'm managing to get much better downwards pressure just hit my head. What are you doing in here wasp? I'm just looking for the uh, surface rust nearer the tail stock because that was a piece of the uh, original diameter so once I start kissing that area of the blank I know I'm done. We need to be level in this plane because otherwise we're going to just create a trumpet. Right, we're good there. Stop and have a look. I think that's okay. So now, where did I put my chuck key? So now what we've got is the correct diameter there. These marks are from uh, the mole grips that I held it in when I upset this end. I'm going to chuck it up. I'm using my chisel as a uh, my file as a gauge there. I want to take this little slope off and have a step there. So I need to be able to get my file on the inside of that and allow a little spare for the fact that this isn't a safe edge. Oh, excuse that noise, it hurts my ears probably. Uh, at least you can turn the volume down. All you machinists out there are going, you're doing it all wrong. Needs to be done, using what little initiative, sorry, rather than what, more initiative than skill, what little skill I have. If you don't do that, you don't have to crawl about under the lathe. But, I obviously really enjoy crawling under the lathe, so I do it a lot. I'm going to give myself a little more speed, probably to about, what do we reckon there, 260-ish? I'm going to creep up on that mark. Yeah, we're not quite there. I'm now going to use the corner of the file just to make a start. A finger along the top of whatever tool you're using often makes uh, makes for a better cut. Just indexing your uh, your brain to where the tool is. I'm having to be careful on this cut because my live edge of the file is facing material I want and I don't want to eat away that shoulder. We're getting there. I'm using the, uh, the rust as my gauge as a depth gauge. Right, we're almost to depth, so I'm going to move to the smoother side of the file. Don't tap hard on your cast iron bed bars, that's not what they're for. Take care of where your safe edge of the file is because you can use it to your advantage. 
I'm just going to cut into that corner again. Take the shoulder back slightly. And then I can sit my safe edge in there. And press up against it. And know that I'm just levelling off the shaft. Comments. Yeah, that's looking about right. I'm going to take this area of the shaft down slightly more to match this area. And then everything else take, needs taking down quite considerably. As you can hear though, even with the pressure I'm putting into this, the lathe isn't bogging down. What I really could be doing is uh, using my vernier gauge to uh, to get this diameter perfect. In fact, I think I may move, may move to that next. I'm now just going to move over onto my uh, rim just to round that off slightly. Light passes, very light passes now just to, uh, let's see, and then I'm going to break that edge. Oh, he's dragging his file back. Yeah, but the pressure's changing. Remember, even more so than when turning wood, grabbing all of your work whilst the lathe's turning. Bad idea, bad idea. That kind of idea. That's all right, that. Um, how are we diameter wise? Let's go 9.39. And on here, 9.44, so I'm going to take next to none off that. Nine 9.41. That's as close as I'm taking it. This is where I need a different file because of this dimension. Square file. This is cutting really well. Sorry if I'm quiet guys, but I really want to concentrate. I only have to do this once. I'm now going to move back towards the jaws just because all of that section needs to be uh, uniform, ready for me to tap. I'm using a bit of uh, this motion, seeing as I've got a broader area to clear. By bringing all of this area down, instead of just concentrating on the width of the file, establishing my shoulder, I'm not establishing two shoulders and risking binding the file this way. Binding would be uh, unpleasant in this scenario. Now that area is flat and I've created workspace, as it were, I'm going to go back to the shoulder. I don't know if you can see it. After having done that for a while, I end up with a small taper. To that shoulder which is where I need to break that hump so I can then do a, a square cut and get a square shoulder so what I do need to do is see how much thinner we need to be not excessive pressure letting the file do its work concentrating on all the angles this you know if you're a pilot you're pitch, tilt, uh, sway. I'm increasing my pressure slightly as my confidence in the cut has increased. Know your limits, don't bear down on the file with all your might. I'm tapping on another file now, not on, the, uh, not on my bedways. I've moved to a clean face of the file again. I'm going to have to go and get my file card and clean this out shortly. Bearing in mind that we're taking this down thin enough that bending it would be possible. So the thinner the uh, stock gets, the uh, 
lighter cuts as with turning wood. Now if I was a clever person what I'd have done is I'd have put a magnet in a plastic bag inside out below the lathe here then I could have just picked it up, turned it inside out, removed the magnet, thrown all the chip or the swarf but thinking ahead isn't my strong suit. A bit of uh, pressure towards the camera here just starting to creep that dimension back. If you can this way at all, hold on let me take you to that view, if I can't this way at all catching the edge of the jaws is a real possibility. Stay straight. Lightening up the strokes as you're close to your tolerance. I'm just going to knock the iris off. I think this dimension is good. Sorry, you're just looking at the back of my head there. I think, uh, yeah, we're nearly there. So I need to thread there. In fact, I think we're there. Precision tool for cutting off. So this is, uh, yeah, there we go. What have I come over here for now? Uh, oh, yeah, constant straight strokes. If you're not confident, you will waver. Learn to cut a piece of wood. All of us are built differently and have slightly different body mechanics. And you can watch one person do something over and over and never be able to replicate that motion perfectly. I'm not punching a baboon off screen here and demonstrating a saw. Look at everybody, see what works for you, learn the principles, look at the physics of it and what you're actually doing with any work, even using a file, you are presenting an edge to the work. The second that you start getting some move in your piece, you know that you're close enough. Right, let's um, pop these tools out of the way, clean off the laid bed. Just before I clean off, I'm briefly going to bring you back and talk about file cards. It's very fine little hooks like staples through cloth. Doing it with staples doesn't work, the wire's not strong enough. And you can't get them close enough really. But yeah, so with that you just brush a file. I'm going to look the way the teeth are cut and they're cut in this direction. And I'm going to go with those. And I'm not forgetting the edges, straight down on the edges. And uh, it doesn't really show up on the camera, but bar a few little bits of uh, swarf stuck in teeth there, which I could pick out with a scribe. That is more than good enough. Yeah, so this is the. Uh, Kind of plumber's blowtorch, is it map gas or whatever they call it? Butane, propane, mixed gas. Self igniting this one, I think it sent me back about 25 quid altogether, something like that. The gas refills are, I don't know how much, but that's twice I've done this job and two of the jobs previous. I think it's more than half full. Safety, safety, safety. I've got a vice in a vice here, of course. Always a good idea to have a couple of little metal vices that you can just clamp into your larger vice for jobs like this. It does look more like an M6 than it. I think M8 is going to slide past. Yeah, so it's got to be an M6. What I'm going to do is just chamfer the edge slightly to give the die a fighting chance. Cutting fluid, not got cutting fluid, have got, up near you actually, I have got three in one oil. I've got cutting fluid, I just, you know, finding it. Try and be dead level. I'm pulling out on these arms, which makes it easier to stay level. That's actually started now, so I can feel the tension building up there, so we'll turn back a quarter turn and break the chip I felt it there you'll feel the slightest little pop in your fingers we're in the cut now anyway remembering to rotate back and break the chip now and again 
just check how low I'm going and I should be able to cut almost down to that shoulder now it's feeling a bit chewy there for want of a better turn I'm gonna reverse back off slightly just pop a little bit more oil in there what I do need to do now is uh, come back out a little and clear myself some space under there clear that swarf out We can cut a little further there, I think. You can actually hear a little click there as I break the chip. That was it. I've not got any pressure at the minute. <laughs> can you stand a small musical interlude whilst I, uh, whilst I fire up the compressor there. So you'll hear how loud it is when it comes on and then I'll send you for your interlude. <laughs> sidebar I tend to sweep up my chip bag it up and then create a wood pile down the garden and what I hoover up into my uh, well I'll show you Davros another day what I hoover up goes uh, in the bin I'm afraid but that's because there's lemmings that's because there's a uh, mixed media not lemmings so here 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 we've got the three diameters the upset area that we faced off beveled and created this shoulder uh, let me get a pointy no patterns and pointed and pokey so uh, a wood sheath carbon pointing instrument this shoulder we built this is close to the original diameter but we took it down to within a couple of uh, tenths of a mil and then we stepped down again and threaded this should be M4 thread. I'm going to find an M4 bolt. Of course, by uh, M4 bolt, I meant M4 uh, nut. And we've got a bag full of them. I'm happy with that. I need to check on the actual chair. We've got one piece that traverses past the end of this bolt. I need to make sure I've got room for clearance there. There's plenty of clearance of this arm at the end, side of the bolts. There we go. 